So if you ever pitch to anyone at all, if you ever want to influence anyone at all about anything, then this is gonna be relevant to you. So this is from my book called How to Change the World in One Pitch. And the very first chapter of my book, I'm gonna talk about, share like a three minute story. You'll see here, non-attachment is the first idea. It's right at the core and it's right at the top. It's also the first chapter in my book. That's what we're gonna talk about. The application of non-attachment to being able to authentically influence people, uh, win more pictures, non-attachment. Now the first thing is that there's an entire section on mindset. One of the four sections I mentioned is mindset, which most uh, books on pitching don't even mention at all. And yet I found it to be the most powerful. And of mindset, the most powerful idea is actually non-attachment. That's the opposite of what most people would think. Most people think that you get results through having goals, right? And non-attachment is not the enemy of goals. There is a subtle distinction. First, you have a goal. You have an intention for a conversation. Have an intention not only for yourself, but actually for the other person as well. What they are gonna get out of it is more powerful than you having an intention for you even. And then the second part is to completely surrender, completely drop that intention. Just like on the morning that you have an exam, drop all that study you've done, it's too late to study more, and you just focus on being fully present for the exam in front of you, being present. Now I discovered this the hard way, <laughs> back when I had my first job, at uh, my first software um, startup. I was employee number 28, and my general manager was a guy called Graham Morphin. And I still remember walking into his office and saying, hey, Graham, I have some great ideas about how we can release better software to the North American market um, so that we don't lose sales like we are currently because of our quality issues. And what he said next shocked me. It wasn't, no, you're fired. It wasn't, no, get out of my office, you insolent little so-and-so. It was, great idea. Why don't you pitch that to this Friday senior management team meeting? Never saw the curveball coming. So I did that. I dutifully rocked up. Mildly encouraging smiles around the senior managers. I pitched my idea. By the end of that meeting, I'd successfully wiped the smile off every single person's face. And even the people who'd been supporters of my idea were now detractors. Graham taps me on the shoulder and he says, Daniel, that really didn't go so well, did it? And I said, no. But I was thinking, I sucked. And he said, do you know why it didn't go well? And I said, no. To which he said something that changed the course of my career. He said, Daniel, you cared deeply about your outcome, but you forgot to care about the people in the room. Next time I want you to switch that around 180 degrees. Care less for your outcome, but care for the people in the room. I said, that's great advice, Graham. I'll do that next time. He said, great. Because I'm setting this up, you're going to do this again in next Friday's senior management team meeting. And before I could say, Graham, no, please, he'd walked out the door. And I'd been given the opportunity to stuff up monumentally twice within eight days in business. Now, after that meeting, I rocked in. I saw the senior managers again next Friday. Same frowns I'd etched on their faces from the week before. And by the end of the meeting this time, those frowns softened. They started to nod their heads and saying, yeah, we need to do what Daniel suggested. And I couldn't believe it. It was the same pitch, the same PowerPoint, the same language for the most part, but what had changed was my non-attachment. I was no longer attached to my outcome and my focus was on caring for the concerns of the people in that room. See, as Graham told me afterwards, he said, last time you might as well have told them, you guys are idiots for not seeing the world the way I see it. Care for the people, not your outcome. Now, in the work I do today, you might think, well, what's the application of this to me? It sounds vague. It sounds ethereal. This is not vague and ethereal. This is, this, this is the absolute key to everything else you do. In fact, if you don't have non-attachment, then nothing else you do in the course of pitching, selling, or influencing will be optimized. It will be compromised. When we debrief the wins of the tech CEOs that I coach on the Mastermind, the year-long coaching program, we get on our weekly calls and we're sharing the things where they've just gotten oversubscription to an investment round or they've just run some, won some ludicrous customer opportunity. 
things that we've been planning together as a group, sometimes for weeks, and we celebrate that win, and we say, what caused you more than anything else to achieve that win? The most occurring answer is, I was not attached to the result. It changes everything. If you don't believe me, experiment with it. I trust this has been useful. But I'm not attached if it hasn't been.